Is there a way to get another weapon? Oh yeah, that was some nice damage. Good work. Good work, Elias. You have a way with poles, don't you? Yes, very good. Hello reformers and welcome back to a world of ice and fire. Now on our rampage to eliminate or at the very least to try and take out as many Volantis vassals as we can. We have come across another one. He has about 300 units. Just thought you'd like to see my army composition for the moment. And uh, we're basically going to be having a uh, kind of a combination here. Nothing, nothing too drastic has changed with the exception of obviously having many less Unsullied than what we had last time. But this is maybe a good thing because obviously Unsullied on the fields of battle, they are going to be pretty immobile. Even though they are pretty fast, they have some good athletic skill, they do not have mounts. And so they are going to be a little bit more static than, say, some slaver camel riders, or some exiled knights, or maybe even some mounted sergeants. Now, amusingly enough, you, you, you might be asking me, oh, where did you get those, <laughs> where did you get those reach mounted sergeants? I actually have no idea. I think I gained them from a uh, prisoner train of some kind. There was a, uh, uh, bandit party nearby from my thief, and this was a long time ago, this was when I was playing off screen, even before the previous episode, and uh, I got these guys and I just chucked them into my garrison, because that's basically what I do with anything that's not, like, you know, anything I want to use at that particular moment, I'll just put them all the way into the garrison here. We are, of course, also using Sir Janus Lyron, who is the fellow that actually told us about this castle to begin with. So he's obviously going to be, you know, participating with us. However, he is not counted as a companion of any kind. So he technically can die, which is um, a bit of a, well, shall we say it's, it's, it's either a, a pretty sad thing indeed, because he's probably going to die, or it could be a pretty entertaining thing, because on the one hand, we're going to be rooting for him. And on the other hand, we're kind of a bit wary because he might actually end up succumbing to his wounds of some kind. But anyway, I'm going to ask you a question. I'm going to ask you, how long do you think Sir Janus is going to survive? And that is that is the thing. That is the thing that we uh, we're going to be we're going to be uh, asking at this point because who knows? Maybe he's going to survive many many more fights. I mean, obviously, I, I don't think he's actually going to be in this particular round. It doesn't seem like that to me at the very least. I can't see him at the moment. So that's obviously a thing. Anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to put everyone in white, right? Ranks, yes, ranks, not tanks, not anything else. Thank you. And anyway, we are going to, oh, there we go. 144, actually, 144 enemies. I think that's actually not even that bad. Let's get our people to move up a little bit here as well. Bear in mind, this fellow has relatively similar units to ours in terms of numbers that is and i think we should be in a pretty decent position i'm actually going to tell the cavalry to follow me i don't want them being too static and i'd like them to be a little bit more mobile for us and we're going to actually take our skirmishers and our spearmen and we're going to place them pretty close by to our archers as well because it seems like they're i don't know why they're standing all the way over here but uh they they appear to be doing that which is a bit weird don't know why they would but they are apparently being a bit cautious, I suppose. I mean, they did lose many of their comrades in the previous uh, in the previous engagements, so I suppose I don't I don't blame them. Anyway, uh, it seems like there we go. It seems like we are now suffering a little bit of an attack, which is actually not even bad, because that means that we will be able to eliminate their cavalry pretty quickly. Actually, let's get our spearmen a little bit more to the front here because we want them to be able to absorb as many of the arrows coming in as possible because we really do not want either of our giants to be taking the arrows and uh, yes well Sirio getting himself eliminated well that's just that's just how it has to be you know that's just how it has to be unfortunately some of my companions are going to be targeted and well at the very least they cannot die so i suppose that's pretty good anyway my uh, my estimation for Sir Janus is that he's going to survive at least this episode. Wow, did I really just take that much damage from falling off my horse? I think I did. Yes, I think I did. Anyway, point is, I think he will survive at least this episode. 
And me saying that is probably going to be signing his death warrant, but I'm still going to say that I have high hopes for him, and we'll see how he does. I am actually without a horse now, so this is pretty bad. And we are coming in here, or at least the, uh, the, the enemy is coming in, and we are going to be prepared to fight. Whoa, okay, these guys are coming in with their standard bearers? Why are they coming in with their standard bearers? This is really bad for them. This is a, this is the worst thing that they could possibly do. I mean, I guess they are used to kind of improve morale and everything, but I would not be doing this. This is, this is pretty bad for them. Anyway, I'm going to tell my spearmen just to charge straight on in here because we cannot allow the archers, even though they are relatively close by to us, we cannot allow them to continue shooting, and so we are going to try our very best to just eliminate as many as possible. I, I got to be careful about my shield as well. Seems like I'm getting uh, a bit opened up there with my defenses, and that's never a good thing, but uh, yeah, hopefully I'll be okay. Yeah, we're losing more Unsullied here, not something I'm very pleased about. Let's see if I can tell my other people to charge in as well. And we will, after eliminating these guys, we will be going back into formation. And then we will await the next wave. There we go. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Let's not allow our very few cavalry units to go into the enemy and uh, just, well, basically throw their throw their lives away. We cannot have that. We must play extremely cautiously. And let's see whether we can do that. Okay. Well, ah, uh, not entirely sure what's going on with... Why, why am I? I have no idea why they decide to go all the way over there. Oh well, never mind. Let's just, uh, let's just tell them to go over here and attack the cavalry division because that's basically what they need to do right now. And let's see if we can maybe eliminate a couple of the enemies off there. Oh, there goes his head. There goes his head. Okay, yeah. But yes, I would very much like to try and eliminate... Oh, as well as stumbling their horses. If we can eliminate their horses, then this is very, very good. Then we will be able to reduce their mobility significantly. Oh, I'd like to get on that horse. Oh, never mind. Okay, so far it seems to be going a little, little better. It seems like to me, whenever we're taking a huge amount of damage, their archers are the ones that are actually doing it. So if we can try and prevent that from happening by maybe acting as a bit of a decoy, now that I have another mount, I should be able to do a couple of hit-and-run attacks, maybe distract the enemy a little bit, and at the very least enough to uh, potentially give us a small advantage. And uh, you know what we're going to do? We're going to tell everyone a whole position back here. We're going to hopefully get them out of the way there. And uh, we're going to take a couple of casualties here, but most of them are not actually dying. They're, they're actually just being knocked unconscious, which is actually fine. So, that's not a big deal. As long as we can do that, I think that's fine. Oh, I'm dead. Am I? No, Fearsome Cry. Fearsome Cry is going to save the day once again. Yeah, I usually tend to use that less of an offensive ability and more of a, something that can basically just save my life anytime I'm kind of in a bit of a spot. And uh, that it certainly was a pickle. Uh, it really, really was. Anyway, let's see if we can uh, charge in once again as they are now all scattered, and this is obviously going to be much easier for our Unsullied because, I mean, goodness knows, the Unsullied are going to be able to basically go one versus two at the very least and will be able to pull off a victory. So being able to do that is very valuable for our army indeed. And it seems like the archers are charging. Maybe. They seem to be. They seem to be charging in a, a little bit. Just, just a couple of them. Hopefully I won't get shot. I am almost. I, I'm, I'm becoming a little bit exhausted here. I, uh, I have. I have normal stamina right now, but it is going to be depleting over time, and I think we'll be exhausted in, in basically no time, really. Okay, come on now. Yeah. Oh, we're taking damage from blood loss. That is bad. I really wish there was an ability where I could basically just bandage myself or stop the bleeding in some way. But obviously, we're on the battlefield. It's not really going to happen very easily. Ah, uh, oh well, never mind. It appears as though, well, the damage is just going to be done over time, and I, I can only hope that we might... Yes, we have. We have achieved victory. That is fantastic. Where are all my units, by the way? My, why are all my units all the way back there? I guess they were running after someone, and, uh, well, 
Speaking of someone, there's one person running away in that direction. It seems like it might... Oh, yes. Yes, we actually have some cavalry now, so hopefully our mobility will be a little increased when running down the routing unit. It's actually really close to me dying here from blood loss, so I'm very much hoping that that guy is going to be dead soon. I think I probably could have actually pressed tab right there to uh, get out of the battle, but uh, I'm just kind of a bit wary of doing that now. I know that someone actually did clarify in the comments and say that if all of the enemy units are retreating, you know, with the status retreating or whatever, and just in general trying to rout, then you are able to press tab in that case, and then it will count your victory. But if the enemies are still fighting, of course, then obviously it's going to count it a different way. Anyway, you can see here, we lost 77 in total, but only 14 of those were actually deaths, and 13 were unsullied. Which one actually died? Who died? Who's the other one that died? Because I'm not seeing that right now. Ah, veteran unsullied. Ah, yes, of course it would be, wouldn't it? Ah, uh, well, never mind. Okay, so we did get 28 kills. Woon Woon is doing an absolutely fantastic job. Only, Dongo only getting three. You know, if I had access to his equipment, I probably would have already taken away his bow because he is just so, so good in melee. And that actually says something to me. You know what I should do? Next time we're in the battle, I should tell Dongo, or shall we say the archers, to use melee weapons only. And then we're gonna see him gain so much efficiency. It's gonna be really good. Anyway, this fellow is yielding to us. We're gonna take him prisoner once again. And uh, yeah, I, I know a couple of people said, it's probably not a good idea to execute vassals. I was just hoping that maybe I'm, I might be able to make it a little easier on us because obviously if they are executed and out of the way, you know, then I don't have to worry about them anymore. But Obviously, it does have its drawbacks, and uh, pretty severe ones at that. The reputation of ourselves would be pretty insanely tainted, and as a result, well, everyone would start declaring war against us, which would not be very good. Anyway, you know what we're going to do? Uh, I'm actually going to leave all the loot, because there is someone, and I'm not going to say who, I think you probably know who it is, he's the fellow that we've been spreading rumors about, oh yes, he's very close by to us, so we're actually just going to leave, and uh, we're going to see, ah, Sirio is impressed with Thoros, Thoros' skills, apparently, without good honest folk like him here, we'd, we would all surely be doomed, I'll warrant, I'm glad to have him with us. Oh, well, there you go. Very nice indeed. It seems like we do have a couple of companions that actually get on pretty well, actually. And there's the fellow that I was talking about. I kind of just didn't really want to chance the fact that it's going to take three hours to do the burying and the looting and all that stuff. And, uh, yeah, I didn't really want to chance it. As you can see, look at him. He can actually see us from that distance. So I'm a bit, uh, obviously a bit worried about that. Is he actually going to chase us? I think he's slower than us because he has so many more units. Yeah, yeah, he is much, much slower. Okay. Oh, and there are the second sons. Okay, so those guys, you can actually recruit them for 120,000. I, th I believe I actually spoke about them in the previous episode. And it would have been amazing to get these guys. Absolutely amazing. 500 of them. You can basically just go crazy and, uh, you know, winning all the field battles that you could ever want because, of course, they are all cavalry. But, obviously, you need the space, you need the army capacity to be able to uh, do that. So as soon as I get 500 spaces, or at the very least, I think I probably need about 470, adding in companions to the mix. As soon as I have that, oh yeah, you can bet, you can bet I'm going to go and get those guys. It's going to be pretty cool. Uh, I actually don't even have enough money for that right now, so it's probably not going to happen that easily, but yeah, it would be really cool to see that. Anyway, do I have a shield for uh, Hagen right here? Uh, it would have been really nice to actually give her something, but uh, I I'm actually going to take away the dagger because I think she's going to be much, much better with just the bastard sword. So she's going to be able to, uh, well, kill some everything, yes. Kill some of everything, that's what we like. Janice is still alive. Janice is still alive, so hopefully we'll be seeing him for quite a bit longer. And I have leveled up as well, so uh, yeah, I'm actually leveling up Charisma right now, so that's what I'm going to do once more. And 
I am going to be attempting to get an additional point in persuasion, probably leadership as well, because reducing troop wages is probably a good idea. But if I am going to be running primarily unsullied, then it doesn't really matter because they have zero wages. So there's that. Anyway, shield, weapon mastery. One of these, I think, is probably going to be our selection. You can see here my athletic skill is just utter trash because uh, I do have... Uh, oh yeah, did I actually mention this? I do have a, a new set of armor. I, d I don't think I mentioned that, but I have a new set of armor. Bought it for about 30,000 and then I upgraded it for another little bit. And uh, yeah. So now it's actually doing a pretty decent job for us. I actually want to spec into trainer skill because I think that could probably help us out a little bit, but we are using hired units for the most part. So I think I'm just going to go for another point of shield to try and prevent us from getting absolutely murdered at every single turn. And I'm going to start specking a little bit into archery. I don't think I'm actually going to be doing any archery myself because we do have... Uh, where it, There, this guy. Yes, Baron. Baron Grey. He is fantastic at archery. Actually, uh, the other fellow, Ang Angui? Angai? I, I don't know how to say his name really, but I'm gonna say Angui because it's kind of funny. Anyway, that fellow, he has nine in power draw. This fellow only has five, which is still decent, don't get me wrong, but the other guy obviously is a completely different beast because he also has about 400 and something in archery proficiency. So yeah, that fellow is really, really cool. Unfortunately, he does not have a good time in our army and seemingly has a bunch of relationship problems in regards to getting on with people. So anyway, I'm gonna be attempting to restore myself a little bit and then we will attempt to hunt down another vassal. Well, this is rather amusing and uh, I gotta say it's bordering on a little bit well, I, I was not going to say disappointing, really, but it's kind of insulting to uh, to this guy in particular because they're literally offering 200. <laughs> I, I can't even get over that. It's, it's 200. 200 for this guy? I'm really surprised. I'm actually not going to be accepting this. I am not going to be accepting that whatsoever. 200 stags? For one of their vassals, that does not make sense to me. Not by any means. Okay, ah, yes, one of my wounded... Yes, I was actually fighting wounded, by the way. Silver, thankfully, is a healer and is capable of healing our wounds. So that's pretty nice. Ah, it seems like that fellow is attempting to lay waste to one of our villages. Well, obviously, I'm not going to turn around right now. It's going to take me way too long to get there. So what about if I attempt to starve out this keep once again. We'll see how that goes. Let's see if I can maybe do something here. And let's see. Seven more days still. Seven more days. That's pretty good. Okay. So I'm actually just going to do this, you know, standard stuff once again. And can I build checkpoints? I can actually build checkpoints. Building defenses protects your troops during the siege, helps to avoid some enemy skirmishes, and prevents the entry of food and reinforcements. It also lowers enemies' morale and helps you negotiate the surrender of the place. Ah, so even with five engineering skills, it's still going to take 44 hours. I guess we will try to do that. We could also find a traitor within the within the defenses. Should we try to do that? 500 stags. Okay, sure, why not? Let's see if they actually find something. And I'm, I'm just going to wait here. I'm just going to wait here and we'll see if anyone turns up. And if they do, then I'm probably going to cancel the siege. Oh, allow him to join your party. Who's this? A mercenary. He says he is an exile from the settlement that we are besieging and he wants revenge on his masters. Sounds like a plan to me. I'm going to allow him to join. There we go. Oh, that's going to be cool. I, th I feel like he's probably going to be pretty pretty devastating, so I'm, I'm happy that he's joined us. Okay, so... Ah, oh, there we go. As a disciplined army, your men have made latrines, pipelines, and a pond for their weekly bath. A healthy camp prevents disease. Very good. Okay, so is there anything else going on here? No. Okay, so it's going to take a little bit longer to do other things, but that's fine. Hopefully our checkpoint will be up and running relatively soon because the fellow that just raided our village is probably on his way here. Let's be honest. All right, several merchants approach you wanting to sell goods in the camp that has formed close to yours with the wives of the soldiers, prostitutes, refugees, children, and other followers of the army. All right, they and their money are welcome. Yeah, why not? Why not? There we go. Yeah, fantastic. There we go. Your party gains five morale. And we are also gaining another 11,400 to add to the treasury, which is very nice indeed. 
And yeah, well, you can see exactly, you know, I've been, I've been busy. I've been busy gaining all these, all these enterprises in all kinds of different places. So that's pretty good. Otherwise, yes, he has now raided it. He has now raided it. So hopefully our checkpoint will be up. No, that, no, it's still, it's still being built. I'm a bit worried about this. Ah, there we go. The checkpoint is finished. Now order active watching. Let's do it. Okay, so your perimeter control is ready. You have set a perimeter for surveillance around this area. No one can enter or leave without the knowledge of your men. This will be beneficial, especially when you have to negotiate the surrender of the castle with its commander. Okay, I'm pretty happy with this. Now we basically just have to wait. It seems we're actually getting extremely lucky with the various people that want to join our army here. And I'm, I'm actually going to allow the mercenary to join us once again. I don't exactly know what kind of quality of troop the guy is, but I'm going to be doing that nevertheless. And uh, shall I start actually building something for an assault? I don't really want to do that, you see, because if I start doing that, I don't know. I mean, I'd kind of like to try and starve them out a little bit, because if we can do that, it's going to weaken them, it's going to make some of them run away, and in general, it's just a much better strategy to do that rather than chuck my units into the fire arrows, which are inevitably going to be there. And, well, I, I don't know. I've been here for a couple of days now, and it doesn't seem to be reducing the amount of, of uh, food they have. As you can see, the castle's food store should last for seven more days, which is kind of bad. But I guess what we can do is investigate the defenses, try to sneak inside. Oh, okay. Well, that's not going to work. Hello. Oh, well, this is kind of bad. My weapon's been damaged? Are you serious? Already? That's not very good. Okay, well, uh, can I can I maybe get another weapon? Is there a way to get another weapon? Oh yeah, that was some nice damage. Good work. Good work, Elias. You have a way with poles, don't you? Yes, very good. Okay, maybe maybe we can do a little bit of something here. Is that, the, is that the guy that I hit before? No, it's not. Unfortunate. Yeah, that is the guy though. Very nice. Okay, yeah, there we go. Okay, now what we're gonna do... Oh no, we're not gonna do this. We're gonna try... Can I use my... Yes, I can. I can use that. Give me this. And give me this. There we go. Okay, I'm ready. I'm ready. You Come at me, fellow. Yes, you're dead. You're not, but you will be. There you go. You're dead now. Fantastic. Uh, no. Yes. Oh, they're not wearing helmets. It's so easy. It's so easy when they're not wearing helmets. That is, that is an oversight. That is an oversight, sir. Yes, there we go. You drive off the guards and cover your trail before running off, easily lo losing your pursuers in the maze of streets. All right, so we can tour the grounds, but I don't really want to do that. So, yeah, anyway, let's just uh, continue, I guess, to... Uh, I guess we could prepare, clear the ground for the assault. I guess we could do that. I mean, we're, we're already kind of doing that, so why not? And we're kind of luring the opponent in. Let's see. Yep, there we go. Oh, this is the ruler, as far as I'm aware. This is the ruler of Volantis, I think. I think it is. He has 471. It is going to be a little bit harsh for us to deal with, but I think we should be okay. So let's take to the field and see what we can do here. I believe someone actually, by the way, asked where I uh, where I got this weapon. Well, this weapon is actually from a traveling merchant. And uh, the traveling merchant in question, it's basically an NPC that gives you randomized loot and weapons and the traveling merchants that I've seen recently have not been extremely good. The ones that I've always found since that time have always just given me an option to buy furs and uh, other random miscellaneous stuff and that's obviously not going to be extremely useful because you know the, the prices for his furs are usually much more than that of White Harbor and Winterfell and uh, Pentos and and Myrrh and all the, all and all these places. So, it's uh, yeah, it's probably not the best idea to buy trade goods from him. But as I say, this is the exact person that I found the uh, the Arak from, which is what it's called. It's called a a long Arak or something along those lines. So yeah, it's just a bit weird, really. I don't know. I don't exactly know why that would be the case. Why he wouldn't have any other stuff. But I'm going to tell Dongo to hold fire now, as well as our other archers, which is not exactly great. Probably should put him on a different tag. But you know me and tags. I generally don't uh, 
don't deal with them that well, so I try to keep things as simple as possible. Now that was easy enough to eliminate the little amount of skirmishers that are coming around here. There we go. That guy's also off his mount. Hopefully our, uh, our other people will be able to take him out. Oh, there's the, there's, the, there's the ruler. There's the ruler himself. Yeah, maybe we can... Yeah, there we go. That is fantastic. Yes, the enemy troops are panicking. Let us charge. Let us charge straight on in as they are confused and a little bit dilapidated. I think the... I actually think the panic has subsided now, which is a bit of a shame. I actually hoped that the panic would be lasting a little bit longer, but you know how it is. Sometimes that just doesn't happen. Anyway, we're just going to run along the line there, do as much damage as we possibly can, because we can do it, you know, we can run along here, we can deal massive damage. I mean, look at the damage we're dealing right now. It's pretty fantastic. Oh, he's dead. He's dead. Sir Janus has been eliminated, and uh, I, as I said, <laughs> I guess uh, I guess he's either meant to die, or I jinxed him in some way. So, my apologies. <laughs> my apologies. I guess he doesn't mind too much, because he did get to see his, uh, his ancestor's castle be built, and garrisoned, and, you know, its glory brought to the, to the forefront of uh, everyone in Essos. Everyone in Essos is talking about how the ruined castle is now back on its feet and holding an army capable of great things, or at the very least, I hope, great things, because obviously we, we do have wildlings for the most part in the garrison there. And they are, well, not exactly good, you know. The wildlings are very low-statted units, so it is going to be a little difficult suffice it to say, but yeah, well, well it doesn't matter. Uh, oh, 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 these are, these are elites. Okay, these are elite archers. We should be a bit careful here. Uh, is that the enemy coming over there with their, with their cavalry? I'm not entirely sure. I should try and gain some speed here, if at all possible. Yeah, there we go. Yes. There we go, nice. Okay, that's fantastic. Okay, so we're actually moving forward in a pretty good way here. But unfortunately, we are starting to be a little bit overextended, I would say. So it's definitely something we should be thinking about changing in just a second. So what I'm going to do is we're actually going to tell everyone to hold position basically in kind of like a center here. And I'm going to try and get people into ranks as well. But obviously, we're going to just give the enemy a little bit of time to kind of regroup and everything. But also to assess the situation correctly because we don't want to just continue charging in these units are very expensive i mean i know that my wallet knows that more than anything he you know i was going to say he for my wallet yeah but no anyway the point is is that uh, our treasurer has been saying to me why are you spending so much money elias and i'm just like well you know you got you gotta you gotta well spend money to hire extremely good troops <laughs> that's basically that's basically it anyway Let's tell them to once again get into ranks. I know Shield Wall generally is going to be a little bit more defensive, but I kind of feel like ranks might be best for offensive capability. And uh, I don't know whether that's the case, but I'm kind of liking how ranks looks and how it performs seems pretty decent. So that's generally why I'm going for that. And wow, the you know what? Someone should tell the Volantines to put on some helmets because I know that some of them do have helmets, but for the most part... I'm seeing people without helmets and they are, well, they're dying very, very easily because I can just aim for the head, I can aim for the head hitbox and then just murder them, just absolutely murder them. So yeah, there you go. That is pretty amazing. Who is this? Is that, is that Woon Woon? Yep, that is Woon Woon. Good work. Dongo, I don't exactly know how Dongo's doing. I think he, I think he's doing all right. But Woon Woon is already a... Uh, well, he's he's just fantastic. I mean, we know that. We know that already. He's just really good. Oh, so Baron actually did get himself eliminated by uh, blood loss. Well, that's all right. That's bound to happen. Let's tell everyone to go up and attack the enemy archers. As you can see, they are all in a wonderful, easy-to-kill line, which is exactly what we want. And I am going to take a little bit of damage along the line here if they know what's good for them but they are a little bit too slow to react. Most of them are now running away. 
and that is exactly what we want. We do want a couple of them to run, of course. And here comes our army. Oh yeah, they, 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 they just haven't been able to do anything. I've just been running interference. So much interference on our mount here that it is making everything so much more difficult. And uh, I gotta say that they don't have any camels this time around. They don't have any camels. I know, I know people wanted more camel stories, but if there are no camels, there's gonna be no camel stories. So that is, that is just how it is, you know? If there are no camels present, they, ca they cannot provide their amazing, overwhelming power of storytelling. So, you know, that's just how it has to be. But, you know, don't worry if, uh, I, I, see, I saw in the comments actually that uh, Dawn, I believe, Dawn has a huge amount of camel units as far as I'm aware. So uh, that's definitely going to be something that we will be eventually going towards, or at the very least we'll be aiming towards that. But first, obviously, we must we must conquer Essos as, as quickly as possible. But uh, yeah, dealing with the Valentines is, well, probably not the best idea. I mean, let's face it, I should probably get a vassal relatively soon as well. So I'm actually going to take a look at my party after this, and I'm going to ask you what you think. I'm going to ask you if you think... That any of these companions are actually going to be turning out to be decent as vassals. Obviously, I would say that generally a person with high leadership skill is going to be a pretty decent choice. But you've got to remember that in a world of ice and fire, leadership is actually a shared skill. So it is not only a leader, leader skill or a personal skill, it is also a party skill, which helps to increase the amount of units that your army can hold. So that's the reason why having many, many companions with a very high leadership skill is going to enable us to hopefully eventually be able to recruit the uh, second sons, you know, those guys that I was talking about earlier. And uh, yeah, so we, we don't really want to give away a companion that has five or six or even higher than that leadership because then it's just going to be, you know... A bit of a waste unless uh, unless they're able to obviously field huge amounts of units as a vassal and help us out so anyway Elias went on an absolute tear right there and he was able to accrue 71 takedowns which is pretty amazing actually Dongo did more more damage than Woon Woon that time so that's pretty amazing anyway 383 383 were eliminated we only lost four which I am actually very surprised about in the previous fight we lost so much more was, was it just because of our tactics it was probably because of our tactics anyway the enemy still has 110 for us to fight let's do this ah this is a very interesting environment that we've gotten ourselves well into basically because obviously we're going to be meeting our opponent in this line of trees and uh, I feel like it's going to be offering a pretty unique situation because we've never really fought in trees that much because usually it is basically either a flat battlefield or just a little bit mountainous little, little hills here and there but for the most part not too many trees so as you can see they seem to have a huge contingent of cavalry and I'm hoping that with my cavalry, we might be able to bait theirs into coming over the hill away from their archer's line of sight. If we can do that, then we will prevent many, many casualties on our side, as you can see. This reminds me of every Total War, uh, you know, tutorial ever, because usually Total War will give you a, a tutorial to, you know, teach you about hiding in the, in the trees and everything and then they'll be like oh yes now you can now you can flank the enemy successfully and so on and so forth I'm always terrible at that but anyway point is it reminds me of that and uh, yeah as you can see they're they're not really doing a very good job they're not doing a good job whatsoever and obviously R and Sullied have they all have spears it's just so incredible that they are charging their cavalry into us it's just a absolute bloodbath anyway as you can see, we've already eliminated about 30 of the enemy's 110 total, so we should only have a very small contingent remaining. I'm actually going to tell everyone to charge in except our cavalry. And what we're going to do is we will tell our cavalry to follow me, like we are doing right here, and I'm hopeful that we will be able to get a... Where, where are they? 
Where are they? Ah, there they are. Okay, so now we can tell them to charge in because, as you can see, our infantry will hopefully deal with the infantry, you know, of our opponent as much as possible. And our cavalry, who hopefully have a little bit of a... A little bit of a bonus against archers will be able to eliminate the archers without too many difficulties. And uh, I'm a bit worried about this actually because uh, we don't really know where their reinforcements are going to spawn in if they do appear. Because you never know, maybe they're not going to. Okay, w wait a minute, wait a minute, we've got to be a bit careful here. Oh, it seems like their reinforcements have already come in, it seems. Ah, this is bad. I'm going to unleash a fearsome cry. There we go. Yes, that, that is a very, very powerful ability in my opinion. And if you are going to create a character in a world of ice and fire, I would recommend going for the warrior trait, even though a lot of people say that the natural leader is very powerful, and it is. I mean, you know, obviously, being able to heal your units, and I'm talking about every single unit in your army for about 20% of their health, that's a very, very powerful ability indeed. However, I personally just really like the, the, uh, just, just being able, the, the, the capability to just move any unit out of the way and away from you is a fantastic survival skill. And that's exactly the reason why I'm, uh, why I, why I recommend the warrior trait, even though, as I say, the other is a little bit more powerful, perhaps, on a grander scale, but anyway, six renown for us right there. Obviously not too much because we are outnumbering them relatively considerably. Whoa, okay. We actually get the opportunity to take this guy prisoner. Very exciting. Okay, let's take him prisoner. Kind of surprised about that. I actually thought that we were not going to get an opportunity to do that because, I mean, let's face it, he's, he's the ruler, you know? There's no way that we would get that chance. Anyway, I'm actually going to bury the dead, gather and share any loot this time around. The loot is obviously not going to be that good, and I am running out of food, so I'm actually going to need to go and get some more. But, how have we been doing here? Seems like it's still seven days. I'm actually unsure what's going on there. Okay, I'm actually going to... I demand your surrender in exchange. Ah, look at this. Why not? Our Lord would never forgive us for accepting this deal. We must fight. Ah, right. Oh, okay. Well, that's kind of interesting, isn't it? Anyway, I, uh, I think uh, that's actually going to be it for this episode. And they are still attempting to offer 200 silver stags, which I am going to continue to reject. I'm just like, why? Why are they doing that? I have no idea. Surrender, uh, you know, you know what I'm actually going to do? I'm going to say, I offer an honorable agreement to end the siege, because I'm actually going to go and restore my units a little bit in my in my castle, and uh, for some reason the, the food situation is not going down, so I'm going to have to see what's going on with that. But anyway, pay us tribute, and we will go. Tribute? You'll not get anything here. Okay. Well, going to abandon the siege then, and uh, yeah, as you can see, they still have seven more days on their food. Not entirely sure what's going on with that, but anyway, I thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.